Okay, folks, here I am again with another book review, this time of Sandman Slim by Richard Cadry. And here is a tip for booktubers who have trouble with pronunciation like I do. Okay, so I thought it was pronounced Richard Cadry. I thought that was the author's name. But guess what? Oh, by the way, I'm Randy Wright, the literate Texan, and I'm here with another booktube video that I've recorded right here on Driftwood Ranch. And uh, like I was saying, okay, I thought his last name was pronounced Cadry, Richard Cadry, but it's Richard Cadry. And I know this because before I made this video, I did a little bit of research on YouTube largely just to hear how his name was pronounced. Because I'm about to review another book by Tamara Shopson, um, and I was convinced that her name was pronounced Tamara. So two out of the three book reviews that I'm doing, I would have mispronounced the author's name if I hadn't done a little research first. Go figure. Anyway, here's my Sandman Slim review. First, I wanna talk a little bit about the author, Richard Cadry. Um, if you watched my last video, I went on it, what I felt was at great length about Thomas M. Dish. I will not go on in his great length about Richard Cadry because frankly, I just don't know as much about him. He was born in 1957. He's 65 years old. According to the Wikipedia, he's based in Austin, but I believe on his website, he's based in... Los Angeles or somewhere else? Anyway, I guess it doesn't really matter where he lives, though, does it? Um, but anybody who lived in Austin for a while is pretty cool. Clearly, from the content in Sandman Slim, he knows a lot about Los Angeles. Um, this is one of those hard-boiled urban fantasy books. And I suspect that this is a little more hard-boiled than... Oh, what's the other one? The Dresden Files guy, the Harry Dresden books. I haven't read those yet, but I got the feeling those were a little more lighthearted and a little less violent and gonzo. But apparently Richard Cadry's mom was a newspaper reporter. And given that he was born in 1957, she was a newspaper reporter when that really meant something. But, uh, you know, he grew up around books and typewriters and... In my experience, and I run an internet publishing business now, so I run a variety of blogs on a variety of different subjects, but what I've found is when hiring new writers, the people with journalism degrees are invariably better writers than the people with uh, English literature degrees or English composition degrees. I even hired a creative writing instructor at one time to do some blogging for me. She was one of the worst writers I ever had working for me. She didn't last very long. Cadry's written at least 19 novels. 13 of them are from the Sandman Slim series. And he was a science fiction fan as a kid. I enjoyed this part of the interview that I watched with him. You know, he said that he started off reading Robert Heinlein. And I think one of his early, you know, Heinlein wrote a series of books called The Heinlein Juveniles, which was young adult fiction uh, before there was young adult fiction, before they called it young adult fiction. And, uh, of course, that was a long time ago. One of my first science fiction novels I ever read was, was a Highland Juvenile called Have Space Suit, Will Travel, which me and my friends thought was just the cleverest title for a novel. But he also talks about how he went through a phase that he said most young science fiction fans go through, and this really spoke to me, where he really loved Harlan Ellison. And, uh, and I'm a big fan of Harlan Ellison. In fact, um, he was the first science fiction author I ever wrote a fan letter to. And I got a reply from him that was, that was dated December 25th, 1988. And it's a piece of ephemera that I really wish I'd held on to. But like so many things I have to talk about and reminisce about in these videos, it's long gone too. Um, then he became interested in the British New Wave. He mentioned Michael Moorcock as a big influence. And something else in common with my previous video where I reviewed Camp Concentration by Thomas M. Dish, uh, Richard Cadry was a fan of New World's Magazine, the UK science fiction magazine that serialized Camp Concentration. 
which I still have sitting on my desk since I just reviewed it. But uh, Sandman Slim, the first in this series, came out in 2009. And here's what I can tell you about the book. The main character is named James Stark, but everybody starts calling him Sandman Slim. I'm not exactly sure why. I don't know what Sandman Slim is supposed to mean. But, like I said, this is really hard-boiled urban fantasy right here. Um, the book opens with Stark uh, lying in flames and still smoking behind a dumpster in Los Angeles. He spent the last 11 years in hell doing two things, fighting in the gladiator pits there and working as a hitman for the various demons who reign in hell. And one of the one of the really striking things that I enjoyed in this novel was he was talking about how all the various demons in hell who are jockeying for position and, and playing all their Games of Thrones stuff, they're all really loud and they scream and they swear. Um, but he points out that when Lucifer talks in hell, he whispers. I just thought that was such a neat little detail. But uh, so yeah, so somehow Sandman Slim, James Stark, our hero, has found his way back to earth from hell because he can go to hell because he died and was a sinner. He was sent to hell by the other members of his coven and they also killed his girlfriend. So he has returned to earth to get revenge on these bad guys in the coven who sent him to hell. And I don't know how much more into the plot I want to get besides that, but there's a lot to it, and there's a lot of setup for the later books. I am going to throw in some plot spoilers here. So, you know, if you're not interested in having some of the plot spoiled, let it go. But the first member of his coven that he tracks down, now that he's in Los Angeles, now owns a video store. And he goes in and gets into a fight with him and, and cuts his head off. But he's got a magical knife that he brought along with him from hell. And it will damage someone without killing them. So he slices the video, then I don't remember the name of the character, but he slices off the, the guy who owns the video game store. He slices his head off, but it doesn't kill him. So now he's got this disembodied head and a body in the apartment above the video store where he works. And he's communicating with the, uh, with the head of this guy and trying to find the rest of the members of the coven that he used to belong to so he can go get his revenge. And I'm not going to get any more into the plot than that because I actually really like the plot of this book. And I also really enjoy Richard Cadry's writing style. Um, and I do have an excerpt I want to read from. It's short, or I feel like it's short. And this is just an example of his writing style. There's only one problem with L.A. It exists. L.A. is what happens when a bunch of Lovecraftian elder gods and porn starlets spend a weekend locked up in the Chateau Marmont snorting lines of crank off Jim Morrison's bones. If the Viagra and illegal Tracy Lords videos don't get you going, then the Japanese tentacle porn will. New York has short con cannibals and sewer gators. Chicago is all snowbound yetis and the ghosts of a million angry steers with horns like jackhammers. Texas is crisscrossed with ghost railroads that kidnap demon-possessed Lolitas to play strip Russian roulette with six shells in the chamber. L.A. is all assholes and angels, bloodsuckers and trust fund Satanists, black magic and movie moguls with more bodies buried under the house than John Wayne Gacy. There are more surveillance cameras and razor wire here than around the Pope. LA is one traffic jam from going completely Hiroshima. God, I love this town. And so I'm gonna wrap up with that little quote there, but I thought that was really neat. Uh, it's very representative of Kadri's writing. Uh, it's also very representative of the main character's voice. Um, I like his other nickname in the book better, the monster who kills monsters. I don't know how that relates to the nickname Sandman Slim. Um, and you know what? I almost think the monster who kills monsters would have been a better title for the book, but who am I to say? It, it seems to have done very well. Uh, apparently these books are almost always on the New York Times bestsellers list. When I researched the author, he had had 15 books 
out of a total of 19 novels make the New York Times bestseller list. I don't necessarily think that's a legitimate claim to quality, um, but the books sell, man. And so the title must be working if it sells. But uh, I would recommend Sandman Slim to anybody who's interested in urban fantasy. Urban fantasy is a little bit new to me. It was a very popular subgenre when I owned my all horror bookstore. The um, Dresden Files books were big sellers for me. And I guess about the time my bookstore was going out of business, Rivers of London was becoming uh, a big thing. But there were quite a few other urban fantasies that were hugely popular. A lot of times with, with my female customers. And uh, we read a few for the book club there. Uh, but none of them were as hardcore or as well-written as Sandman Slim. So um, I think Siskel and Ebert have, uh, have copyrighted this two thumbs up thing. So hopefully they don't see this video because I think I just violated their trademark. Oops. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. And uh, I'll have more reviews and some best of lists coming soon.